Hey guys, Kellen Chase here with Unstoppable Fitness, and today we're talking about how to improve your mobility without stretching. So, first of all, there are a few things to this uh, topic, right? When we're talking about mobility and flexibility and, and stretching, there are all other parts of this coin, right? We don't, like, we don't want to overstretch something if it's tight for a reason. So, one thing we want to ask is like, why is the why is the tension there in the fir first place? And if you ask that and you look at the body from like a systems point of view, you know, if you follow anatomy trains or something like that and you understand how the fascia works, how how the different muscle systems all work to keep you together, you know, you may be looking at one muscle or one section of your body being tight and it could be because that section is picking up the slack for a lazy friend, right? So the, the, when you're in the presence of instability, one thing that you want to look at and ask is why, why is this tight? You know, what is going on here? Because in the presence of instability, the body is going to tighten up to keep the body together, right? So, so what are we talking about here? We've got mobility, but on the other side of that, we've got stability, right? The other side of that coin is stability. And and that's, if we build stability in the right places, we're gonna be mobile everywhere else because the body can then let go for that to be possible. I've talked about balance, I've talked about muscle balance, strength balance, that type of thing, and it's the same concept here, right? That balance exists, right? The reason that I, I work on my, my lats and my back so much in order to increase my bench press, you know, is because I recognize that I'm only going to be able to push and pull at a certain balanced, uh, ba balanced amount. So when we're talking about mobility and stability, it's the same thing. If you're stable and, and your, your systems are balanced in the right places, then your body can let go and let you, let you move through a greater range of motion. And that's all mobility is, right? It's, it's being able to move through a greater range of motion. So we don't want to always be stretching. Like, I, I don't do many stretches. I do... Um, hip flexor stretch, couch stretch, um, sometimes I'll stretch out the forearms, but generally that is not, not where I focus my attention in terms of warming up, in terms of getting mobile, in terms of getting ready to go. And most of you who are watching this, you're probably looking for how to improve your mobility in your ankles, in your hips, in your thoracic spine, and usually this is around squatting. This is, this is the biggest thing I see where people are looking to improve their mobility is they wanna get that, that nice looking baby squat, right? You wanna be able to get down into that low position um, and hold it comfortably, right? And that's the same thing that's gonna to translate to greater lifts in the, in, on your squat, etc. So I get it, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for how can we really improve that squat, that hip mobility and that squat mobility. And so I do want to talk about stability here, though, in where we want to be stable and how we really want to work the body as a system so that we can let everything else go. So I've personally had some great experience with, with back injury and, and pain there. And, um, you know, I look back at the exact workout that I was doing and I was, I was taking compression off my spine and then putting it right under load uh, immediately, which is not something we want to do. But the idea that I learned from after that is like where we want to be tight and where we want to be loose, right? So the thoracic spine is meant for movement. It's meant for, for twisting. It's meant for uh, flexation and extension. Um, the lumbar needs a little bit of motion, but beyond that small amount of motion, it's, it should be a, a freaking rock. We want to make that solid. Um, and then the hips uh, grab the rest of that uh, mobility. So once we've got the thoracic area mobile, once we've got the hips mobile and the lumbar solid, the lumbar doesn't need to move for most everything that we're doing. And that's going to provide us the best, um, the best amount of motion everywhere else. So ankles as well need to pick up the slack, especially when we're squatting. But uh, ankle dorsiflexion, right? We can we can roll out the bottom of our foot, and we can start to improve our um, our dorsiflexion as well as uh, we can start to get mobility up through the the rest of the back of the spine. I'll I'll probably splice in an image here from Anatomy Trains. Sorry for that. If you heard uh, the audio, I just grabbed the mic. Um, I'll splice something in here from Audio Trains where you can uh, Anatomy Trains where you can actually see that the uh, the 
the rear line fascia runs from the bottom of the foot up to the ball of the foot all the way to the back of your scalp, right? So all through this whole area, you've got fascia that's connecting, that's gonna keep you tight where it needs to keep you tight and, and release when it, when it feels stable enough to do so. So we talked about where we wanna be stable, where we wanna be balanced. Um, how do we get that stability? How do, we, how do we make sure that the spine feels safe enough to release in other areas? Um, one of my favorite moves for this is um, uh, the stir the pot exercise. I'll probably splice that in here as well. Um, you're gonna hold your, hold your elbows on a BOSU ball and you're gonna rotate um, like you're, it's gonna look like you're stirring the pot and everything else stays stable. So you're in, in like a, a prone position doing that. Um, you'll see what I'm talking about. So that is a great exercise pre-workout uh, for really turning on the core, turning on uh, even the glutes if you squeeze in the right area, and that's gonna, the, that's gonna help stabilize everything to allow you to be more mobile. So if you try that, um, I remember the you know, I was first experimenting with this stuff. You can do a stir the pot and a couple other um, like activation exercises and you'll notice that your hamstrings release, that you can actually like touch your toes much more easily. Um, it, it's, a, it's a wild thing once you start to look for it and start to see that you can actually turn on certain muscles and um, you know, the others will release. So that's one, one activation exercise that we can look at. Um, another thing that we want to talk about here is beyond stretching, like eccentric movement has been shown in papers to increase, increase mobility better than stretching anyway. So what does that mean? That means taking your, taking your body through the motion that you're trying to open up um, at a slower pace. Um, so for example, my, my favorite uh, is the goblet squat by Dan John, which is you're gonna hold a, a kettlebell right up here. You're gonna give yourself a kettlebell mustache, as I saw someone say, and you're gonna slowly, uh, slowly go down into a goblet squat. So just touch the, the elbows to the knees in that squat. And as you slowly uh, descend that way, and I'm talking 20 seconds for one rep, maybe um, do, do three of those reps, that's gonna help um, it's gonna help with the activation process and the release, release process as you go down. Um, and that helps with, uh, that helps with your, your hips immensely. Um, yeah, last thing that I like really, I mean, this is the main thing that I really focus on beyond the activation exercises. And um, yeah, beyond the activation exercises is smashing, right? Like we're talking foam rolling, getting a lacrosse ball, digging in there. Um, I love doing this on the hip flexors. It, you look like a monkey humping a football, but whatever, it, it gets the job done, right? It like, it really gets, um, gets the, gets everything opened up there so that like a stretch into a hip flexor stretch is much more effective. Um, I'll, I'll do, I'll start on the hip flexor and I'll roll around through the, the QL, which is a, the quad, quadrilateral, Quadrilateral lem lumborum. I can never pronounce it. I can always read it, but whatever. The QL. We're gonna stick with that, so you don't make fun of me. Even though I'm not editing this out, so you're. Anyway. <laughs> um, after that, like roll. So you'll start with the hip flexor. Really dig in there. Then roll onto the QL. Then through all the way to the side of the glute. So, it, you, for me, it's like just finding that whole area. I imagine, um, like, if you're wearing briefs. Uh, you want to just imagine that you're trying to hit every area through the sides, um, you know, all the way to the glute and back. So you want to want to if like if this is your pelvis, um, you want to cover all this this area on the sides. So right, you know, right on the hip flexor and then all the way out through to the back. That's that's one of my best ways to get mobile before a squat um, is really just. Um, so you can start with a foam roller, by the way, because the, the lacrosse ball really, it's that, that point pressure really gets to it. So start with, a, start with a foam roller, see how that feels. You know, do, do your quad, you know, on, on the top of the leg, do the quad and then roll over into the side and start to see how that feels at the top of the hip and then just take that whole, whole motion. So those are my main tips for improving your stability, sorry, improving your mobility without um, stretching, and that's stability, activation, myofascial release, um, and really asking yourself, why am I tense here? Like, 
why is this muscle tense? And usually what you'll notice is, okay, there's an imbalance somewhere. For example, I'll notice that um, in my shoulders and my back will really start to tense up if I've been holding a position poorly for a long time, or if, I, if I've started to like lean to one side. Um, and this is the type of thing where when you really get in tune with your body in the right way, like um, I'll be in the gym and I'll, I'll, I'll be squatting and I'll be like, oh, my hip is off, <clears throat> you know, as I'm warming up and I'll go do um, some ankle warm ups on the opposite side and then it'll start to even out. And it's, it's, it's just that type of thing where you can start to see where, um, you know, the ankle will affect all the way up, to, up the chain to, you know, the upper back or lower back or mid back. Um, so anyway, really, I, I, I really suggest that you, you keep that question of like, why am I tense here? And where is there possible instability um, in mind? Because that's really gonna serve you through like your lifting career and, and beyond, right? It's, it's that body and muscle awareness of like really getting to know your own system and how it operates uh, so that you can, that you can work with it. Like it's, it's the type of thing that, it's not the type of thing that you're gonna see on, on a workout schedule. It's something that you've got to learn for yourself. It's that auto regulation thing where you start to, to feel like, oh, I could go for this max lift and you know, I can feel that I'm a little bit funky. Probably today's not the day and then come back the next day and like hit it out of the park or whatever it is, right? It, it's, it's that type of, type of awareness where, um, and for me, maybe it's just because I'm extra careful that I've, I've had the injury, you know, I, I've had the injury without any awareness of, of it coming, right? I was warming up and, and crawled out of the gym um, that, that it, it's made me a little bit more wary to, to take the time and really find those days where I'm feeling, you know, gangbusters on so that I can gangbusters on who says that anyway <laughs> I'll leave you with that um, that 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 idea of self-knowledge and trying to trying to figure out your own system so that you can you can look at your body as a system and see where you can add stability in order to, to give you some some mobility so one last thing I've got a uh, a golf ball trick that I, I did I taught this years ago um, to, I was a cheerleader, so I taught this to cheerleaders on how to improve their flexibility. Um, you know, how, how to do, they, they would hold their foot up here, right, and do a stretch is what the stunt is called. So they're doing this thing. Um, and I'd have them roll out the bottom of their foot with a golf ball. And, um, <laughs> and so I taught them this trick. And this trick was using a, a golf ball or a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball. And um, in 30 seconds, I could help them improve their flexibility and their stretch. Um, and we've talked a little bit about how it works on this video already. But um, anyway, I made, it, I made an ebook and a, and a video teaching this little trick because it was one of my favorites. I mean, I, I've still got a video from years ago where I remember teaching this. And one of the comments was like, oh my God, it worked. I had, you know, had no idea. And like, you know, it's got thousands of views and I, I did nothing with it back in the day. But um, anyway, I want to I share this, this with you. So if, you're, if you like these videos, if you're interested, if you want this 30 second golf ball trick for improving your flexibility and mobility, improving back pain um, and squatting heavier, then go to the website unstoppablefitness.co, there will be a either a pop-up or a sit thing on the side that says 30 second golf ball trick. Uh, you can click it, get on the newsletter. I'll let you know when these videos come out um, and other blog posts and stuff. Um, and I'll give that to you for free. So anyway, if you want to check that out, please do. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It was, it was fun to make. It's, it's kind of random because it's like all these little bags of tricks that I've, all these little tricks that I've put into my bag of tricks over time and, and figured out, but this one is one that uh, people have liked a lot. So anyway, check it out. I hope that this video helps you to Im improve your you know, flexibility without stretching because stretching all the time, you can lead to, uh, to hurting yourself that way as well because the body, again, it might be tight for a reason and that's the thing that you wanna, wanna avoid. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of these videos. Um, let me know what you think of my rambling <laughs> and uh, try these out, you know, try out some of these exercises, go do the uh, stir the pot. Let me know how it works for you. 
and I'll catch you on the next one. If you liked this, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great one. Kellen with Unstoppable Fitness. Bye.